Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And this is the last video, what I'm calling Chapter 4, uh, defined as multivariate normal uh, distributions. So let's go to today's topic, which are maximum likelihood estimates. So suppose we have a data matrix Y, and as previously defined, the rows are subjects or units or observations and the columns are variables. Okay. So now this row vector, each one of these row vectors is thought as to have a multivariate normal distribution with mu, with mean vector mu and variance covariance matrix sigma. And this is for all i. Um, we assume that the y's consider they're a random sample, which means they're independent. And then now we want to find the values of mu and sigma that maximize this likelihood. But I want to spend a second on the likelihood. So the left part of this equation, capital L of these parameters, equal to F of these parameters. The, the equation on the right is the density for a multivariate normal. And the equation on the left is the likelihood. And they're 100% the same. You just have to think about them differently. To me, if we look at the equation on the left, which is the multivariate normal density, we're given the parameters. So we assume they're fixed and known, and that's what they are. Then this density calculates the probability of being in a neighborhood around a point. Specifically, this, you know, the point y1, y2 to yn, out in n space. Now, for a likelihood, it's the opposite. We think that the we've observed a sample, and now we consider that fixed. And then the mu and sigma are random, and that we, we find the likelihood of values being in a neighborhood around the points mu and sigma. Okay, So since the joint density, the y's are independent, it becomes the product of the marginals, which is this. And then we plug in what each density is. Remember, it's for each yi, you know, and it's a product from 1 to n. And then this is a constant, so it's raised to the nth power. And then you sum the exponents and get this. So what we're doing, remember, we're assuming that the y's are fixed. And we're going to pick values for mu and sigma and calculate this number. Then we're going to pick different mu and sigma and calculate the number and see which one's bigger. Then we're going to repeat this for all possible mu and sigma to find the mu and sigma that maximizes this likelihood. And the values that do are called the maximum likelihood estimates of mu and sigma. And they're denoted by mu hat and sigma hat. Now it can be shown that the maximum likelihood estimator of mu is the sample mean, y bar, and that the maximum likelihood estimate of the variance covariance matrix is one divided by the sum of these matrices. Now, if you remember when we were introducing the sample covariance matrix, that it was exactly this, but we divided by n minus one. And we divided by n minus one to make it unbiased. So the maximum likelihood estimate of the variance covariance matrix is biased. So if we call this quantity here W, and that will become more evident why we call it W in a second. So it's 1 over NW. That's the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma. But if we multiply this quantity by 1, N minus 1 divided by N minus 1, it doesn't change this value. But then W divided by n minus 1 is what we call the sample covariance matrix. So the maximum likelihood estimate is this quantity here. So it's not unbiased. It's biased by n minus 1 over n. But one note, as n goes to infinity, which means the sample size gets larger and larger and larger, this number goes to 1. So in limit or asymptotically, which means the sample size goes to infinity, the maximum likelihood estimate is unbiased. Okay, a few notes that mu hat is unbiased for mu. So if we look at the expected value of y bar, which is 1 over the sum of the y's, but the expectation goes in because only random variable is yi, 
Well, the mean of each observation is the mean vector mu. And we're summing a constant n times. So we get n times it, but then divided by n, you get mu. So it is unbiased. The maximum likelihood estimate for sigma is biased. And you can see that here, the expected value of n minus 1 over n times s. The only random variable is the random component is s. So it goes in. And, and the sample covariance makes it unbiased. So it is, it's uh, n minus 1 over n sigma. So it is a biased estimate. Now, the maximum likelihood of the population correlation matrix is a sample correlation matrix. So the MLE, so P hat, is just R. It's a sample cor correlation matrix where you know, each element is this RIJ, where it's the sample correlation matrix. <coughs> now, let's look at a, a quick R example to calculate maximum likelihood estimates. So we introduced the mass library because it has the multivariate normal density. You know, you can generate variables from it. So we take a sample size of 1,000. We have a mean vector, 10, 5, 7, 9. We have this covariance matrix, and we generate a data matrix Y. Now, if we take the column means, which is the means of each variable, we get this quantity here. And it's the maximum likelihood estimate the sample mean is. Notice it's close, 10, 10, 5, 5, 7, 9, 20. Now, the maximum likelihood estimate of sigma, the population, you know, variance covariance matrix, is n minus 1 over n times the sample covariance matrix. And we get this. And if you notice, this is very close to the original. Now, it's a biased estimate of the population parameter, but it's close. Look, and I'm, I'm going to do this, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then look up here, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And, and if you compare all of those, they're all pretty close. Now, note that the piece out front, n minus 1 over n for n equal 1,000 is 0.999. And so the, the maximum likelihood estimate is actually very close to the unbiased estimate. The sample covariance matrix. Um, now notice that this, if we just look at the sample covariance matrix, you, you know, and then we compare them, they're actually very close. So let's look at the distribution of the maximum likelihood estimates. <clears throat> distribution of sample mean, and as a reminder, the sample mean is add up the vectors, divide by n. It is multivariate normal, mean mu, and variance covariance matrix, sigma divided by n. So if the yi or iid, that's independent, identically distributed, multivariate normal, then the mean vector is also multivariate normal. And we showed up here that the expected value y bar is unbiased. It is mu. To look at the variance, it's this. We take the variance. Well, the 1 over n comes out squared, and then the variance goes into the y's, and since they're independent, there's no covariance matrix. Well, this, the variance of each y is sigma, so we're adding sigma n times. So we get n sigma, 1 of the n's cancel, and we're left with 1 over n sigma. Now, one note that the, if the y's are IED multivariate normal, then the sample mean is exactly distributed as multivariate normal. But if the, if the sample or IID, but non-normal, and the mean of each is mu and the covariance matrix of each is sigma, then for large n, y is approximately multivariate normal with these parameters. And the proof is by the multivariate central limit theorem. Now this quantity here, this quadratic form, the mean minus the population mean, you know, and then the variance covariance matrix is of y bar, right? That's the variance covariance matrix of y bar. This is exactly chi squared with p degrees of freedom. And p is because the, the dimensions of the vector is p dimensions. Um, the distribution of the sample covariance matrix. Now, notice in the sample covariance matrix S, there are p variances and p choose two covariances. So the joint distribution of these distinct uh, P 
times p plus 1 over 2 distinct values. So if you add p to this, you get this number. In w, remember w was this sum right here. That is what's called a Wishart distribution. Now it's denoted by wp because there's we're dealing with p factors, you know, the dimension p. It's n minus 1, and the parameter is sigma where n is the degrees of freedom. Note that the Wishart, uh, the Wishart distribution is a multivariate analog of the chi-squared distribution. And also note that this quantity here is a Wishart with n degrees of freedom with parameter sigma. If we, if we replace the population mean vector with the sample mean vector, then it's degrees of freedom n minus 1. If we don't, then it's n minus 2. Okay, so we're at right at 10 minutes, so I'm going to end this video, and this is the last one for Chapter 4. Next video, we're going to deal with comparing uh, population mean vectors. We're going to do hypothesis testing. Hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.